Imagine starving yourself for weeks while your belly stays exactly the same. And when the scale drops, it's your arms and shoulders that get smaller, not the fat you actually want gone. Frustrating, right? What if I told you almost everyone doing everything right is sabotaging fat loss without even knowing it? Today, I'm going to fix that. But first, there's one missing step almost no one talks about. It's not cardio versus weights, and it's not some magic pill. It's a hormone and a tiny breathing trick that flips your body from store mode to burn mode. I'll reveal it properly, but not yet. Stick with me because you'll want to hear this after the science piece. But to understand that final step, we need to start with what actually happens when your body tries to burn fat. Because most people have this part completely backwards. Think of fat like a locked pantry of fuel. To use that fuel, you need three things. A key that signals fat cells to open, oxygen to burn the fat, and an engine that uses the fuel, your muscles and organs. When your body burns fat, it breaks down and leaves as carbon dioxide and water. You literally breathe fat out. And this matters more than you think, which I'll show you soon. Now let's move to the next part of the story why fat refuses to leave the places you actually want it gone from, especially the belly. Some areas have better blood flow and more beta receptors, the ones that release fat quickly. But belly fat has more alpha receptors, the stubborn locks that say, keep the fat right here. Genetics and hormones shape where fat clings the hardest. It's not your fault, it's biology. In a moment, I'll show you how to outsmart those stubborn receptors. But before that, there's one more roadblock we need to expose. The hormone that sits above everything else. Insulin. If you understand this hormone, the entire fat loss puzzle starts making sense. Insulin is the master switch. When insulin is high, your body stores fat. It also shuts down all your fat burning hormones instantly. You can sprint, lift, breathe, diet, or take supplements. But if insulin is up, fat loss stalls. A quick story explains just how sneaky insulin can be. I once coached someone who trained two hours a day, sweating, grinding, doing all the right things, but still couldn't lose belly fat. After every workout, he ate a protein bar that looked healthy, but was loaded with sugar. That tiny spike in insulin told the body, store energy, and it canceled his entire workout window. That's how sensitive this system is. A small piece of bread, a sip of wine, a sugary drink, a handful of chips, even the smallest carb moment can shut down fat burning for hours, sometimes the entire day. Now combine this with another major hormone, cortisol, the stress hormone. Cortisol decides where fat gets stored, especially around the belly. It pulls protein from the legs and turns it into sugar, which then becomes belly fat. Stress, lack of sleep, deadlines, arguments, overthinking, all push cortisol higher. That's why people under chronic stress often have a round belly, thinner legs, and sometimes even fat on the upper back. It's not just fat, it's hormonal signaling. And here's where things get worse. Insulin and cortisol team up. These two hormones can override every fat-burning hormone in the body. They're the true gatekeepers. Now that you understand these two blockers, let's continue deeper into the mechanics of how fat hormones work. Because now, the story gets interesting. There are fat-burning hormones. Growth hormone, IGF-1, testosterone, glucagon, adrenaline, thyroid hormones, but none of them can work when insulin is high. Growth hormone rises during fasting, deep sleep, and intense exercise. IGF-1 supports muscle building and fat burning. Testosterone keeps metabolism strong, but again, insulin can shut them all off. And this is why controlling insulin is the foundation of fat loss. So how do we lower it? That's where the real strategy begins. Carbohydrates trigger insulin but fiber doesn't. That's why vegetables and leafy greens don't cause problems. To keep insulin low, 
keep carbs under 50 grams a day for steady results or under 20 grams a day for fast results. Eat less frequently. Use intermittent fasting. Because every time you eat, even protein, insulin rises. There's more. Seed oils quietly push insulin resistance. They're in fast food, bottled dressings, restaurant meals, packaged snacks. MSG also tricks the brain, making you hungrier an hour later. It doesn't just make food taste good, it increases cravings and pushes you to eat more often, keeping insulin elevated. Now add estrogen to the mix. Too much estrogen causes fat storage, especially in the lower body, hips, thighs, butt. Next, cortisol, the stress hormone. It pushes fat to the belly, especially when you're exhausted, overwhelmed, or sleep deprived. It pulls protein from your legs and converts it to sugar, which becomes belly fat. That's why reducing stress, getting sunlight, walking slowly, taking vitamin B1 and vitamin D, these things matter more than people realize. Let's finally bring exercise into the story, but in a way that actually makes sense. Cardio drains glycogen and creates an afterburn window where your body aggressively burns fat to restore itself. But heavy cardio alone won't protect muscle. Strength training does that, preserving your metabolic engine so you burn more calories at rest. If you don't lift weights, your metabolism slows down over time. If you only do cardio, you risk burning muscle. The solution isn't one or the other, it's a strategic combination of both. And what about fasted workouts? Mm -hmm. Fasted low intensity cardio, like morning walks, is perfect because insulin is naturally low after waking up. But fasted heavy lifting or sprints can backfire by triggering muscle loss. Now that we've reached this point, everything is in place to reveal the missing step I teased earlier, the breathing trick that multiplies fat burning. Fat burning is oxidation. It literally requires oxygen. Deep, slow nasal breathing increases oxygen and fat oxidation. Before any workout or walk, sit tall, inhale through your nose for four seconds, hold for one, and exhale for six to eight seconds. Repeat this six times. This clears carbon dioxide and loads your body with oxygen, priming your cells for fat burning. Combine this with the right training sequence and you get a powerful effect. Let's finally build your weekly plan, the one that actually uses all this science in the real world. Start Monday with high intensity intervals, one minute sprints followed by 90 seconds of rest. This rapidly drains glycogen and creates the biggest afterburn effect. Tuesday, do heavy strength training, squats, deadlifts, rows, presses, then finish with a slow 20 minute walk to force your body into fat burning mode. Wednesday, steady state cardio, cycling, jogging, or brisk walking for 45 to 60 minutes. The final 15 minutes are where the fat burning magic happens. Thursday is active recovery, light walking, mobility drills, deep nasal breathing. Your job is to lower cortisol. Friday, another strength session, upper or lower split. Again, finish with a slow walk. Saturday, Long duration cardio, 60 to 75 minutes. Keep it slow and steady. The last 30 minutes is when fat becomes your main fuel source. Sunday, rest or light walking. And if all of this feels overwhelming, there's a slower, easier autopilot method. Walk 10 to 15 minutes after each meal. Eat slowly for 15 minutes. Stop at 80% full. Choose protein in every meal. Swap refined carbs for whole foods. Fix your sleep. This habit-based approach takes longer, but it rewires your entire metabolism. And now a few rapid fire truths. Sweat doesn't equal fat loss. It's just water. Ab exercises don't burn belly fat. That's a myth. Cardio alone won't get you lean. Strength protects your metabolism. A sugary snack can erase an entire day of progress. With the right sequence, the right signals, and the right mindset, stubborn fat doesn't stand a chance.